I begin to feel a divide between my flesh and my spirit. It literally felt like my flesh was trying to peel away from me. Peel away from my spirit. Like I wanted to jump. It actually was a part of a program where God just really seeded this ministry in me. Let me tell y'all something. I done found me a keeper. <laughs> I want to be honest in that. I want to be honest in that. So... What's up, sis? So let me tell you something. Me and my friend decided to um, work out once a week. And we this came about at a retreat. We're at a retreat um, last week. And we worked out randomly one night. And I was like, all right, bet this is cool. I really need to focus on my fitness. And like this workout is really good. Like it's making, you know, my organs are moving, my intestines are moving, you know, things are happening. So I'm like, this is good. I need to take care of my body. Let's do this. And so she gave me a workout plan to follow while she's away because because we're only going to be working out on Saturday. So I'm like, what am I going to be doing throughout the week? So she gave me a workout plan. And one of them was included a 45 minute run um, on the treadmill. And so on day one, where I went to go and do this dang on workout, about three minutes in to the treadmill. First of all, just keep in mind that I do not like running on the treadmill because it is boring. Like I need something to stimulate my mind. I I, I can't. I don't know what's stimulating about running in one place, looking at a wall if the treadmill don't have like the little TV on it or if there's nothing on in the gym that you want to watch. So that was already an issue before I even got on the treadmill, but I was like, I'm gonna do it anyway. So I get on this treadmill about three minutes into the whole experience, I begin to feel a divide between my flesh and my spirit. It literally felt like my flesh was trying to peel away from me, peel away from my spirit. Like I wanted to jump off of that treadmill and it was so intense. I had to start speaking to myself. I had to start, you know, affirming like we're going to stay on this treadmill. We're going to finish this workout because it was that intense. And God was just like showing me like, you are not this body. You are not this flesh, but you are so, and you have a spirit, right? And, and that's where this, the scripture where it says the, the, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Come on now. Our flesh is so weak. And I truly experienced that. It was so wild to me. And so through this treadmill experience, I was like, let me just get on here and tell the girls about this. And let's get into a get in, go deeper about our flesh and our spirit and um what that's all about. Because we need to understand it so we can know how to strengthen our spirit and not always you know, submit to what our flesh wants to do. Because I, I struggle with that, especially when it comes to fasting. I be like, I don't feel like fight. I'm being honest. Listen, I'm being honest. I be like, I do not feel like fighting with my flesh today on this fast. So I'm not doing it. And I don't. And that's just the truth of my reality. It's something I have to battle with. Like when I commit to a fast, do it wholeheartedly and be ready to fight. Like I had to fight on that treadmill to stay on it. So anyway, you see, I got my Bible. We're going to get into the word a little bit, talking about um, the flesh and spirit. So go to your Bibles in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 through 48, 58. And we're also going to be jumping around this whole scripture. So don't even pay attention to the verses. Let's just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and listen to the verses as I share them with you. And I encourage you to go do your own study of this chapter yourself so you can get clarity and understanding in your own um, time. Because you can see and listen to me and everybody else talk about scriptures all day long. But if you don't go and get in the center for yourself, what good is that? What good is that, sis? But anyway, let's get into the word. So we're going to start at verse 45. Because I want to lay, lay an understanding for you. Verse 45 says, so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. So we got two Adams. The first Adam, a living being, which is Adam from the garden. Then our second Adam is Christ, the life-giving spirit. Both Adams created by God. 
So when we're going to go up to verse 22, it says, so it is with the resurrection of the dead, sown in corruption, that's first Adam, and then um, raised in incorruption, that's second Adam Christ. 43 says, sown in dishonor, first Adam, then raised in glory, second Adam, that's Christ. Sown in weakness, that's first Adam, raised in power, Christ. Sown in natural body, Adam, raised in the spiritual body, Christ. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Our natural body, Adam, who laid the foundation of sin when he ate the fruit with Eve, right? And then Christ came to give us life, an opportunity to be atoned and um, reconciled to our God. So first Adam, a living person, last Adam, Christ. And then our second Adam, who is Christ, died just as the first Adam did, but was resurrected and now sits on the throne beside um, God. And our goal is to get there with our Savior, Christ. And so it says in verse 50, what am I saying, brothers and sisters? Is this is this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor can corruption inherit incorruption. Listen, I'm telling you a mystery. We will not fall asleep, but we will all be changed. We'll be transformed when we die, transformed, right? In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, and at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, undefiled, and we will be changed. For this corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body must be clothed with immorality. When this corruptible body is clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body is clothed with immorality, then the saying that is written will take place place death has been swallowed up in victory where death is your victory where death is your sting and then it goes down at 58 it says therefore my brothers and sisters be steadfast immovable always excelling in the lord's work because you know that your body because you know that your labor is the is the lord oh my gosh because you know that your labor in the lord is not in vain phew your labor in the Lord is not in vain, but how can you labor in the Lord if you're not taking care of your body? Every day you are closer to death. Like your body is constantly dying every moment, every second, every day dying because we're aging, not because you're ill, not because you're sick, but because that's just how the, the cycle of life in this flesh works. As you get older, you're aging, you're closer to passing away. And so this is your confirmation for those of you ha who have been talking about, I need to take care of my body. I need to eat healthy. I need to start working out. I need to drink more water. Come on. Let me tell you something. I need to drink more water. Go ahead and get it done. Start doing it. Because as you're doing the Lord's work, you're going to need strength. And what does it say? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's not in vain. And so just as Christ died and was resurrected, he was transformed, we will be too. Well, while you're here, do your work in the Lord. You know that your body is t the temple of the Holy Spirit. You got to take care of your temple. You can't scream and preach a, a good word if your jaws are always chewing on junk food come on the corner come on um take care of your temple and that goes with your mental health as well the thoughts that you allow to constantly disrupt your peace so that you can focus on your labor in the lord come on it includes your mental health as well. Your time management. That includes you stewarding over the things that God has allowed you uh, to obtain. Come on, take care of your vessel so that as you labor in the Lord, it will not be in vain. 
that includes your spirituality where you're spending time with God in prayer, worship in the word. Come on. I don't even, I, uh, come on. I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to help you and me at the same time. Actually, I'm not trying to help. Holy Spirit is trying to help me and you at the same time. Come on now. Come on now. Let's go. It say, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work. But you got to strengthen your spirit. Be disciplined. Be obedient. And keep it pushing. If you'd like, we have a time management course at thepurposeplace.com where you will master your time. You will learn the priority planning strategy. You will learn different tricks and skills that you can use throughout your day to maximize on the amount of time that you have in a day. You can take our Mind Wars course. You can take our Break Disruptive Cycles course. You can take our Solidify Who You Are course. There's, There's things you can do. There's things you can do so that you can be effective in your labor in the Lord so that you can continue to be steadfast, immovable, and excelling in the Lord's work. But you got to be willing to put in the work. You got to be willing to stay on that treadmill. All right? You got to be willing to commit to that fast. All right? Don't play with it. Don't play with it. But that's it, it, sis. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you like, share, and follow this podcast. If you're not, leave a comment in the the comment box, your thoughts, whatever you want to share. Encourage somebody in the comments. Do what you do. But that's it. I love you.